The Fast and the Furious is the Vin Diesel mega blockbuster hit movie where he showed the world that real adults solve all their problems with street races. It starts off with the most needlessly elaborate and insane truck heists you'll see in the entire first half of the movie. They got word of a valuable shipment of analog TV and VCRs in one that's going to revolutionize the world as we know it. This guy knows he's walking a razor's edge and must shoot his grappling hook in a way that will grab something of questionable strength while also making sure there's enough line so that if he falls, he'll be dead as shit anyways. F***ing nailed it. Since truckers spend most of their time winning arm wrestling titles and fighting Mortal Kombat characters, this shit doesn't even move the needle and the driver couldn't give less of a fuck. He's also armed with this little bat, which is the ideal choice when you want to protect yourself, but also don't really. After hitting him in the helmet pathetically for a while, he takes a compass to the arm, which knocks him the fuck out. So now they're in control and can fly under the radar by swerving all over the road and plowing through a roadblock and construction zone going 80 and doing whatever the fuck this is. If you're wondering why they didn't just wait until he stopped at a light or hit up a gas station, then you're a fucking nerd. Now we see Lance Harbor going to this cafe. I'll have the tuna. And holy shit. Now it was crappy yesterday. It was crappy the day before. Guess what? It hasn't changed. If he could get that tuna sandwich without a side of bitchy attitude, that would be fucking great. Just then, the forgotten Hemsworth brother shows up, and after getting lost in Lance's dreamy eyes, Lance starts to feel uncomfortable and decides to leave. But Hemsworth can't contain himself. No! And has some big news he has to get off his chest. Try Fat Burger and you get yourself a double cheese with fries for $2.95. But there's no way they can offer such incredible food at such a reasonable price, so it comes to blows. <laughs> So Vin Diesel shows up and tells them Fat Burger uses no artificial flavors or preservatives and to knock this sh** off. That night, Lance is having a street race against Ja Rule, some Asian guy, and Vin Diesel. It's a hard-fought race where the driver spent almost the entire time looking at everything other than where they're driving. Lance is even streaming. You got while driving through wormholes and shit. But the real hero is this guy who is so fast, he can signal the start of the race Go! and somehow be waiting for them all at the finish line. While Vin may have squeaked by and won the quarter mile race by barely a full minute, he ends up looking like the bitch when Lance drops this sick bird. Dude, I almost had you. <laughs> Luckily for Vin, his humiliation is interrupted by the police, who show these mark-ass bustas what real reckless driving looks like. <laughs> but they don't know what they're up against, and when Vin ditches his car to go into a full Steven Seagal run, the cops get left in the fucking dust. Then Lance shows up and tells him the studio stepped in and demanded they do whatever it takes to make sure he never runs like that again. Things are going great until these bikers magically know Vin is in Lance's car and send some very mixed signals by telling him not to be there. You stay away, I stay away. While also making it really hard for him to leave. Well, that was fucking weird. It's a long story. But not nearly as weird as Lance getting busted by Buffalo Bill. Who brings him to Carl fucking Winslow? While a Silence of the Lamps and Family Matters crossover is a hard pill to swallow. All right, guys. All right, all right, all right. 
It's so much easier with a chocolate milkshake from Fat Burger made with real hand scooped ice cream. Winslow has a sick burn of his own. You want time? Find the magazine. And tells us they think the recent rash of 18 wheeler hijackings involving grappling hook launchers and tricked out Honda Civics might all be the work of the same crew. Lab says the skid marks came back the same. Because he works for the FBI and they're fucking stupid. Anyways, Lance gets suspicious when Speedy Gonzalez shows up and buys like 10 grand worth of upgrades for three Honda Civics. Yeah, three of everything and pays in cash. So he does the very legal thing of breaking into Speedy's garage. But the tires don't match and he learns a valuable lesson in judging a book by its cover and that cash Check this out. was probably just from dealing drugs. Then it turns out that Vince Hemsworth witnessed the whole thing and knows that committing burglary on one of their rivals is just the kind of thing a cop would do. Moves like a cop. So Lance thinks quick and manages to get out of it by going full Charles Manson. This is about race wars. Which they're into, and this movie has taken a really dark turn. Let's go for a little ride. But I guess that's what we're doing now. And next up are the Asians, who shouldn't be much of a threat since their cars don't have any fing engines. There's no engines and their supplier doesn't even think that's a problem. Do you see anything wrong here? No. So they make him drink motor oil, <laughs> which I'm all for because fuck him. We got no way to do it. That's some really stupid shit. Now that they've bonded over some well-deserved torture, <laughs> Vin tells some family stories. I watched my dad burn to death. I remembered hearing him scream people that were there said that he had died before the tanks blew. They said it was me who was screaming. Which is a hilarious mix-up that they both get a good laugh out of. So to celebrate, Lance bangs Vin's sister in the back of an auto parts shop, which is a sign of true respect. Yeah. The next part is just for the gearheads and is extremely technical. What's the retail on one of those? Ferrari. They realize they're out of their league knowledge-wise and haul ass out of there to escape the shame. They try to put that incident behind them by making a toast to a beautiful future. The race wars. God damn it. Anyways, since these guys have been going around shooting submachine guns at shit and torturing people, they finally get busted. Not for any of that, but for having a bunch of DVD players. But the judge lets them go just because there was nothing illegal about that. The DVD players were purchased legally. And even if there was, breaking into people's garages because of something about a race war. This is about race wars is the most insane and unconstitutional thing she's ever seen. In other words, fuck that judge. Was she a great big fat person? For being a little bitch. The next day, he's pissed off about it. Somebody knocked me out. It was you. Which makes no sense because the DVD player thing wasn't even a crime. So what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> And fuck you too, just because. Now it's a dance party, but since nobody has a chance with any of the chicks, as long as this guy's fucking killing it, they decide to use this opportunity to do one last heist. Everything's going great, and as long as the seat cover that already has a giant hole in it can support a grown man's weight, and the truck driver maintains this exact speed, and doesn't pull out a shotgun. And holy shit, now that they think about it, everything about this is really fucking stupid. Luckily, their contingency plan is somehow worse. Unhook yourself! But he's too dumb to work a carabiner. Which is a real shame because I really wanted to know where the fuck this was going.
but it gets worse. And with expert aim, the truck driver takes out Vin Diesel's breaking taillights, which means he's now riding dirty. Then Michelle Rodriguez shows up and desperately tries to prove that she has an actual purpose in this movie. Pull it up to distract them. But then it starts to get tough. So she says, F that. Then we learn two things. One, Vince Hemsworth is a fucking idiot who gets tied up in the line he can't work the clip for. And two, this truck driver <laughs> is a stone cold badass. But she's back and she's pissed. And now she's dead. Now Lance is their only chance, but by the time he makes it there, his hairline is doing terribly, and Vin Diesel's sister has had way too many fat burgers. But they owe Hemsworth everything for introducing them to the last great hamburger stand, so he hops over and shows him how clips work. And son of a bitch, why can't women stay on the fucking road? Oh well, now they're all back home when these guys show up again and rain bullets down on them again. But luckily, they only take out this guy that we don't really care about. And they both did it left-handed, so I gotta give props where it's due. Then Lance suddenly remembers, oh yeah, he's a cop, so he should probably kill them. So he chases them down. Then one starts chasing him and everyone forgets Lance is in a car. Then Vin Diesel shows up and he must have paid attention in science class because he knows if you hit a bike with a car, the bike will fucking lose. Lance might not be the brightest, but he did get top Steven Seagal shots in the academy. So this guy is so fucked. Yep, he's dead, so he tells a bystander they should probably call someone You call that one, one. and hauls ass out of there. Which is standard procedure. Now Lance Harbor and Vin Diesel decide to have one last quarter mile race for some reason. And it takes them both an embarrassing 97 seconds. But whatever, because the not looking where they're driving thing finally catches up with them and takes Finn out. <laughs> Fucking idiot. So after all that, Lance does the honorable thing and gives Vin his car. And by his car, I mean a car paid for by the taxpayers because f them. <laughs> But the movie ends on a high note and teaches the valuable lesson. I have a dream. You and I want to be to Mexico. That no matter how many terrible things you do, <laughs> if you just run away from your problems, all your dreams can come true. I'm free.